All right, happy Friday, everyone. It's 21 News. Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video getting set for the holiday weekend on this Friday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll start out kind of with a zoomed-out national view this evening. Uh, look at high temperatures at many uh, major airports across the country today, ranging from about 92 in Dallas to only 64 up in Billings, Montana. And that clash of the air masses is going to continue as we head into the weekend. There's going to be a lot of severe weather once again this weekend in parts of the uh, lower 48 states. In the meantime, big severe thunderstorm watch box this evening from just north of St. Louis into Illinois and stretching all the way down through Dallas and into the hill country of parts of Texas. We have a couple of thunder showers in central and western Ohio this evening, but those will stay well out to our west. So the severe weather risk this evening includes places such as Chicago, St. Louis, um, down towards Memphis, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex as well, uh, but a big severe weather day is going to unfold as the weekend gets underway. A level four moderate risk of severe weather out for parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, and the Storm Prediction Center actually briefly considered going with a level five high risk in some of that same area. Uh, some uncertainty as far as the uh, coverage of storms uh, tomorrow afternoon, so they didn't pull the trigger on that level five, but nonetheless, level four risk uh, in places like Oklahoma City tomorrow afternoon. We do have a level one risk, low end risk of severe weather in eastern Ohio and western PA Saturday. If you watched Weather Geeks last evening, I talked about how I kind of suspected the Storm Prediction Center would introduce a level one risk, a low end risk uh, across parts of the region. They went ahead and did that today. I think Sunday will be another pretty big severe weather day, this time not in the Plain States, but in the Midwest, the Mississippi Valley, parts of the Ohio Valley as well. So a place like Cincinnati, Indianapolis, St. Louis once again, maybe as far north as Chicago and even up into lower Michigan. Should be a pretty big day coming up on Sunday. Now, in our area, I think Sunday is going to be a fine day overall. The rain and the thunder will probably hold off until sunset and after Sunday evening and into the overnight. And as uh, showers and storms work east, they will start working into a more unfavorable environment for severe weather across eastern Ohio and western PA. In the meantime, we have a, a space station flyby of note this evening. Pretty good one with a mostly clear sky. This will appear in the northwest sky, 9.53 p.m. and 9.59. Six minutes later, disappearing in the east sky. I oftentimes remind uh, viewers of Weather for Weather Geeks of space station flybys. Just a reminder in case you're new to trying to check these out, the International Space Station when flying overhead does not blink. If you see something moving overhead that's blinking, that's an airplane. Um, it's a bright dot of light moving overhead and not blinking. That is the International Space Station's with humans on it making its orbit around the Earth. All right, so the storm setup on Saturday, instability is not going to be a problem. It's going to become pretty warm, pretty humid on Saturday with dew points getting up into the middle and upper 50s, close to 60. So we've got the juice. What about the wind aloft? It's modest, but enough to uh, power some perhaps gusty thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. We have a modest amount of wind shear. We need a trigger. We need a we need a mechanism to really get these storms going. We do have sort of one with a cold front approaching. It's a weak front, but it could be just enough to touch off some showers and storms tomorrow afternoon, maybe through early on our Saturday evening. So here's what we've done with the risk outlook for Saturday, pinpointing between two and seven as the most likely kind of five hour window of for severe weather on Saturday. Now there may be a, a thunderstorm around as early as midday. 11 a.m. noon or so, but severe weather with that batch is pretty unlikely. Uh, mid to late afternoon, though, as we get into the hottest part of the day and our cold front starts approaching from the west. Any storm could produce a burst of wind, and there could be some hailstones coming out of these. I don't think this is much of a tornado setup for us, but given how it's gone so far this spring, we can't 100% totally rule that out. So here's a look at one model depiction. Uh, as we head towards midday, let's back this up to about noon. I didn't analyze or draw a warm front on the weather map, but I could have. There's a warm front kind of like this right around midday, and this might touch off a shower or a storm. Maybe the better chance of that is north of Interstate 80, but nonetheless, it's a possibility. So keep that in mind for around midday Saturday. For the rest of the afternoon, <clears throat> this model depiction doesn't have a lot of storms. And, you know, maybe one of those things where a lot of us try to stay dry, but there's going to be a scattering of those thunderstorms, and anyone that does get a thunderstorm could have a pretty strong one. So this is the, the depiction right around 2, 3 p.m. Dry in some areas, thunderstorms in others. 
and that risk will continue through maybe about dinner time, six, seven o'clock at the latest. It'll dry things out Saturday night, and I'll tell you, Sunday is easily the pick day of the upcoming weekend. The day could start with fog, especially if you get some rain on Saturday. Um, but we're looking at a mostly to partly sunny sky during the daylight hours Sunday. I think the rain and thunderstorms will hold off locally until Sunday night, uh, probably around or after sunset. So here's 7.30, 8 o'clock Sunday evening. Band of showers and storms may be trying to work east at that point, but at, at that point, the daylight hours are just about over with. If you have outdoor plans Sunday, graduation parties, yard sales, things like that, we should be in pretty good shape for <clears throat> much of the day. Then an unsettled day coming our way on Monday for the Memorial Day holiday. Now, I don't think it rains all day, but this will be a fairly unstable air mass we're in for a lot of Monday with another warm front lifting to the north and east, cold front approaching from the west, and in this air mass, there could be a shower probably at any point on Monday, maybe the best chance for thunder as we head towards midday and afternoon. In addition to the usual severe weather risks, there's a low-end flash flood risk with uh, perhaps thunderstorms trying to move over the same locations a couple of times on Saturday. don't think it's going to be a big deal, but it's a possibility. Now, in addition to the hail, damaging wind, and isolated tornado risk on Sunday, in a place like Dayton, Cincinnati, maybe Columbus, up to Cleveland, there's also a medium flash flood risk. I think there could be some bouts of heavy rain locally in the Youngstown area Sunday night, but again, that's mostly after sunset, Sunday evening into the overnight. And so something to keep in mind, there could be some gully washers out there. Here's a look at a uh, rain forecast for the next 72 hours. So basically taking us through the holiday weekend, there could be some places that get up over an inch and a half worth of rain over the next 72 hours with the best chance perhaps being in Western and West Central PA. When we look at uh, out uh, over the next week, pretty active pattern uh, with the showers and thunderstorms visiting us on occasion Monday and probably into parts of Tuesday as well. And I think there'll be some showers here and there underneath a cold upper level low pressure system on Wednesday. We'll finally dry things out at the end of next week. But pretty active Sunday night through Wednesday and therefore I think a lot of us are gonna see at least an inch if not pushing close to two inches worth of rain over the next seven days with most of that occurring Saturday through Wednesday. And the next week looks really nice. Last couple of days of May looking bright and sunny. Some chilly mornings ahead though. It's Friday evening, so let's take a look at our long-range panels here. Now, this is our cool shot that comes towards the middle and latter portions of next week. Day or two with highs in the 60s, lows in the 40s, second half of next week. As we head into June, though, uh, generally not much cool air to be found across the lower 48 states. Weeks 3 and 4 forecast, not chilly. You know, it's June after all, but probably not a lot of high heat to be found across our part of the lower 48. The heat is probably centered across the Rockies for a lot of the first half of June. And while we will see the pattern settle down in terms of precipitation at the end of next week and probably in the following weekend, after that, we're going to have our chances of showers and storms. But overall, from coast to coast, I don't expect June overall to be quite as active and stormy with a lot of severe weather as earlier in the spring season. If you watched our summer forecast put out a little while ago last week, uh, we talked about perhaps as we get deeper into summer, it really becoming a much more uh, benign pattern, hotter, drier. I still think that'll be the case, and we'll talk more about the longer range, including the summer trends in future editions of Weather for Weather Geek. Stay weather aware on Saturday. I'll have updates on social media throughout the day. Have a great weekend and a good Memorial Day. I'll see you back here Monday evening.